Here at Mobile World Congress, I'm standing with Morgan Gerhardt, who's the Senior Director for Products for Citrix's Cloud Networking Group. Pleasure to be here. <laughs> Now, Morgan, we're talking, of course, about Netscaler and application delivery. Tell me, what are your customers saying is their main goal in this area? So the main goals we're hearing from our customers are, there's no magic to it. Ultimately, what they want to be able to do is they want to be able to roll out better services, higher quality services, at a faster rate, and they want to be able to deliver them at a lower cost, and potentially even at a lower price to their customers. A common comparison model for how to achieve this is of course what some of the OTT players are able to do. The OTT players, as everybody knows, are able to roll out new services at a dizzying pace. Those services are constantly being tweaked and evolved over time, almost at a continuous, continuous change rate. And then they are made available at what initially appears to be absurdly low prices. Though well, that's not always the fact once you sit down and you do the apples to apples comparison but at least they're able to be made initially available at a very low price. So does virtualization enable them to roll out better services faster and cheaper? So virtualization is certainly a key component of how all this gets delivered, but the way that I think about it is, is that virtualization, while necessary, in and of itself is not sufficient. In, in fact, just doing virtualization by itself, it's not, it, it certainly will not quote unquote move the needle, and then, in fact, in fact, virtualization done in isolation might in fact make things worse. You know, virtualization needs to be implemented in a way that it works in conjunction with the larger environment, data center, network, and services architecture that's running on top of it. Okay, so if it's not just virtualization, then what, what are the other key factors? That's, that's a great question. So, it's, it certainly starts with virtualization, or virtualization is the bottom infrastructure layer. But the virtualization needs to work in, in conjunction with and complement the larger services architecture. So a good way to think about it is, is that the way that services are built, or evolving to be built, is that they're designed around what you can think of as fast fix and scale out. It's the fast fix and the scale out which allows the services themselves to evolve and change and be delivered with high availability and at a constantly evolving at a constantly evolving rate. For those application arch those services architectures to work, virtualization is absolutely critical. Because without virtualization, you can't do scale out, you can't do fast fix, you can't do design to fail, and all of those kinds of things. But virtualization in and of itself doesn't mean that a service is going to be able to do all of those kinds of things. So they really need to be designed in conjunction with each other, and the underlying virtualization infrastructure networking and otherwise needs to have visibility into how the applications themselves are evolving. Okay, and what about automating how things are run? The other thing that has to happen is, is that there needs to be what you can think of as an automate first mindset. Everything, services and the infrastructure, needs to be thought of in terms of how do I automate this? Because it's automa automation that provides the speed, but more importantly it's automation that also provides the availability because automation removes the, it removes the potential for human error. So when we look at how these services are being designed and rolled out, the first question out of everybody's mind is, can I automate it, can I automate it, can I automate it? And if it can't be automated, then nothing else matters. Great, well Morgan, thanks for bringing it back down to earth for us. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm.